This is the last, the eighth part of biological psychology. We're going to cover the divided brain and consciousness. Here we go. So first of all, we talk about our brain. It's divided into two halves. You got your left side and your right side. And right down the middle is this really thick band of nerve fibers. Remember, nerves are just neuron axons that are all wrapped up. So there's a really thick band of neuron nerve fibers that are wound up these nerves and we call that the corpus callosum that connects the left side of your brain to the right side of the brain so if you know we were to draw a brain I don't know why I'm drawing it crooked and one side bigger than the other but uh, pretend they're both the same size with me for a bit here and this there's a thing that's right here in the middle connects both sides and this is the corpus callosum right there there's a little empty space here, and there's a little empty space up here. So kind of right here in the middle, this area gets crossed over. And this corpus callosum uh, connects the right to the left. So information is constantly being passed this way and this way. As, as I think we mentioned earlier, a lot of your body's, um, how your brain works is the left side, what, you, what happens on the left side controls the right side of your body. That's um, with your motor your motor cortex, which is right about here on your brain, um, your senses, etc. So it's there's a lot of action going on here. Now, once in a while, when people have epilepsy, actually back in 1961, there was uh, some psychologists or Vogel and Bogan, and what they said did is uh, they had seen this done in cats and rats before and they said okay there's this epilepsy going on there's these people having these seizures and what we think is happening is you know there's their brain and man I'm not very good at this there's their brain and what we think happening is that there's too much electricity bouncing back and forth right too much action going on back and forth bouncing 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 and that's what's causing these seizures so they said what if we cut this because they saw in the rats and the cats that there really wasn't that much of a negative side effect. They couldn't see anything. So you know what? Let's try it with the humans. They thought the, the risk is worth the reward here. We hadn't seen any bad effects and so they, they did it on And sure enough, worked great. No more seizures and the people lived some pretty um, normal lives afterwards. We kind of think that would be difficult because so much has happened, but the, your, your brain learns how to uh, adapt to the situation. And it'll relearn and use parts of it, of the, the, each side, to adapt to the situation. There are, however, a few kind of interesting and glaring uh, problems here, or not necessarily problems, but uh, scenarios that happened. And um, in 1967, some more psychologists, Gazaniga and Sperry, both did this or did this study where they showed research participants who have had split brain uh, surgery. All right, and so your eyeball, right? When you see something, your eyeball when they're looking at something, the right half of your eyes look to the, uh, or take it to your left visual field. So this right half of the eye over here is the right half of the eye over here, the right half of the eye over here is taking in the left visual field. So this is kind of going like this, and this is kind of going like this, right? So this, this area right here is your left visual field. Um, your right visual field is, is by the left side of your, of your eye, so over here, right, this part goes like this, right, this one crosses over here, and this one kind of goes like this, right, and so this is your left visual field. You can kind of see this, if you look at something that's a little off-center, like something off to your left or off to your right, and then look at it with one eye, and then switch, you can kind of see how it moves, depending on what eye it is, that's because your visual field, if you look right, right here, um, it's kind of right in front of you, so it's right. This, this, the right half of this eye is right in front of you. Over here, it moves to the left, right. And so, if you look at it to the right, to the left, it's moving, depending on what you are uh, you're, you're looking at. Okay, so anyhow, so we've got these visual fields, and uh, let's let's 
redraw this. So we've got heart here, right? That's not good. We've got heart. And we've got the eyes here. And then we've got your brain, right, attached to the eyes. Now your brain, there's a spot right up here called the optic chiasm. Optic chiasm. And this is where the optic nerves of your eyeballs cross over. So this kind of goes to the back here, right? And this side goes to the back here. So even in patients who have split brain, their eyes still cross over and they still go to the other side. All right. Now, what happens is they, they said, all right, look at this word here. They, this is with patients that have had your, their corpus callosum severed. I said, look at this word here. All right. We're going to flash this word on the screen. This dots right in the middle. And what happens is this. They say, okay, what word did you see? Okay, what word did you see? Well, if you can recall from the last lecture, what's over here on the left hemisphere? This is your language center, right? This is where Broca's area and Wernicke's area are, right? Your language center. And so when they say, what word did you see? Left side, right, goes over here to uh, the right one, and they say that they see art, right? They see art. However, when they're asked to point with their hand, now with your left hand, point to the one that you see. Well, the left hemisphere, right, and the, mo the motor cortex used to cross over, right? your motor cortex is about here, it used to cross over to, to work the left side of your body and vice versa, but now it's not. So your left is working only on its left. So when they ask the point, they point to he because your motor cortex on your left side is only working for your left side now instead of the opposite side because the corpus callosum has been severed. All right, so this is really interesting. When they point, these people were getting like, they'd be like shocked that they pointed to he after they had just said art. And so without even realizing that their brain was, was working and they don't even, aren't even consciously aware of it, that their brain knew that they, had, that they were pointing to he um, and not, well, they even said art. And so it's kind of like they have these like dueling personalities uh, almost. It's not really dueling personalities. Nothing about the personalities different, except it's kind of a silly situation where they don't really realize what's going on. There's also like instances of guys with uh, severed corpus callosums who might be buttoning their shirt with their right hand and then unbuttoning it with their left because their two sides aren't communicating with each other um, with what wants to go on. So it's kind of really interesting. It's an interesting study that happened. Um, so that's kind of a couple or some split brain studies. Uh, your visual fields, like I said, the right hand, the right sides go to the left, and the left sides go to the right. So it's not your right eye doesn't get everything in the left, and your left eye doesn't get everything in the right. The right sides of each eye go to the left, and the left sides of each eye go to the right. So keep that in mind. Um, don't get that confused at the, the left, like most things in your body, right? Your, your left motor cortex right here is controlling, or I'm sorry, my right motor cortex is controlling my left hand, right? It's not just one or the other, it's the sides of your eyes, okay? Um, so there's some split brain stuff. Um, talking about like brain dominance and this, the different spheres of your brains, a uh, couple things just to keep in mind. Um, well, you might have heard uh, different people say, are you left brain or right brain? We're really both brains. Everything's working in conjunction. Well, um, your left brain is might be more literal understanding. Right? Your right brain is more for um, complex understanding, right? So these two are working in conjunction all the time when you're uh, thinking about things, right? So your literal understanding of what's going on in your left, your more complex understanding is going on in your right. So they're working dual. Um, so there's not one side or the other. There's different sides that are more prominent in certain things, but they're always working in, in tandem. 
And so we can't say that you're left brain or right brain because it's not really an accurate description of how your brain works. However, there are the, the different sides that have different uh, areas that they're a little bit more responsible for. Like we said, the left side was like language, right? Your language area is in your left side. Um, your left side is good at s for speaking, calculating, right? And then your right um, is more perceptual tasks, right? So a lot of times when people are really good at art, we say they're right brains, and when people are really good at analytics, they're left brain, which isn't really the case, right? Because we just mentioned that right brains is good for a complex understanding of certain things. Um, so uh, take it with, with a grain of salt. You have different areas that are, that are good at different things at different parts of your brain, but it's all working together. Uh, just always keep that in mind. Um, okay, moving on to consciousness. Consciousness is our awareness, right? That's a fancy word for us being aware. It's whether we're aware of something or not, right? And so our brain, right, this is kind of becoming in vogue again. Back, the first psychologist that you probably ever remember, uh, if you didn't take a psychology class, was Freud, right? He was all about consciousness, right? And unconsciousness, what we're uh, aware of and what we're unaware of. And so this idea kind of went away when we got into behaviorism and we want to see everything, we want to be able to touch it and see the results of everything. But now this is kind of coming back, this idea of awareness. Um, this really uh, thing, uh, new thing we have, or thing that we're starting to understand a little bit more is called dual processing. This idea that at the same time we have this, like these two roads going on in our minds at all times. We have this high road that is uh, conscious and it's, it's our deliberate thought, right? So what we want, to, so what we're trying to think about is what we are thinking about. We have this low road that is automatic, right? It's what we we might not be thinking about, but it's just happening, right? When when you see somebody on the street, sometimes you might have automatically this prejudice against them, and you haven't even thought about it. You didn't stop to think, am I going to be prejudiced against this person or not? Um, that's a kind of a, a bad example. I mean, a mean example, but that's an example of this automatic processing that's going on in your brain at the same time. Deliberate, you might say, wait a second, there's no reason for me to feel that way, and you're going to attempt to not be. But at the same time, everything's going on. Some examples of this idea of dual processing, this consciousness, some really cool examples uh, that have been rather recent. In 2004, psychologist uh, Labette said, uh, did stay where he said, move your wrist, right? And it took approximately 0.2 seconds after they said the movie wrist for you to movie wrist, right? Not That's not surprising. It took you a while to realize it. However, the cool thing, or the, the surprising thing is, is that your brain waves spiked 0.35 seconds before you started to move anything. So your brain waves spiked, which means that they knew, your brain waves started to know what it was going to do before you actually were consciously aware of it. This 0.2 seconds is when you were consciously aware of moving your wrist. Your brain waves spiked 0.35 seconds before that, almost half a second before that. It was already planning what to do, and you didn't even realize it was planning what to do. Another um, example of this was Wegener in 2002 did a stay where it said, press the button, all right, um, and you respond, your brain waves, right, using uh, scanning your brain, you respond, brain waves respond one tenth of a second faster than you uh, realize that you, that you think that you've realized passing it. And then, really cool, in 2007, uh, psychologists soon with some colleagues um, did a study where they used uh, an fMRI, right, which we st which we learned about a little bit earlier in this unit. fMRI to look at your brains, and they could decide whether you pressed um, the le the left button or the right button, right. They, you, they weren't asking you to press left or right. You were just going to press it randomly, and they could see with sixty percent accuracy before you pressed anything. They could predict which button you were going to press by looking at this fMRI and seeing which part of your brain is being activated. So.